Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video we're going to be talking about antidiuretic hormone and aquaporin ch channel proteins. The last video I did discuss the collecting duct but I just wanted to make the separate video to discuss uh, aquaporins which are water channel proteins and I wanted to link it in with antidiuretic hormone. So aquaporins are water channel proteins which are present in the membranes of the collecting duct epithelial cells and they're initially present in the membrane of intracellular vesicles that bud from the Golgi apparatus and then they enter the cytoplasm of the collecting duct epithelial cells. So we have a hormone called antidiuretic hormone and this is produced by the posterior pituitary gland. Now um, initially it binds to receptors in the plasma membrane of these epithelial cells and it stimulates the production of cyclic AMP as a secondary messenger and then this goes on to activate protein kinase which phosphorylates proteins and then it causes these vesicles which I've just mentioned to fuse with the plasma membranes so what this means is these aquaporin channel proteins they are inserted into the plasma membrane so water can be removed from the fluid in the collecting duct into the surrounding interstitial fluid to be taken away by the peritubular capillaries. So that's how the action of antidiuretic hormone works. So in response to the action of ADH or antidiuretic hormone, the collecting duct becomes more permeable to water so water can be removed from the um, collecting duct into the surrounding interstitial fluid. So when ADH is no longer available to bind to its membrane receptors, the channels are removed from the plasma membrane via endocytosis, and then the membrane invaginates to reform vesicles containing aquaporins. So when it's a state of, um, well, when they aren't required anymore, then basically uh, we have a process called endocytosis where these aquaporins basically invaginate and they are stored in vesicles. So if we have uh, an increase in the amount of ADH which is released uh, and binding to these collecting duct epithelial cells, the collecting ducts become more permeable to water, so more water is reabsorbed. And if there is less ADH, then we have less reabsorption of water and we have the excretion of a greater volume of dilute urine. So lastly, just to finish off the video, ADH is produced by neurons in the hypothalamus and released from the posterior pituitary gland. The secretion of ADH is stimulated when osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus respond to an increase in blood osmolarity. So that's when the blood becomes more concentrated and above the normal range of 280 to 285 milliosmoles. So during dehydration, blood plasma is more concentrated, therefore uh, ADH secretion is increased to, incre to increase permeability of collecting ducts. And just the last few points, we have minimum obligatory water loss, which is basically the minimum amount of urine which needs to be produced in order to remove the safe amount of urea and various toxins. So even if you're dehydrated, um, the obligatory water loss, the minimum amount is 400 milliliters and uh, normal hydration levels urine amount is 1.5 liters. Okay, that's all I want to discuss in this video. Thank you very much for watching.